Hello everyone. In today's video I'm going to show three different ways to style a carbo bottle. I got three empty bottles from a friend who had visited Goa recently and who knows I like crafting. This model is absolutely beautiful just as it is. But let's see if I can do some justice to this already beautiful bottle. I'm Hilda and I welcome you all to my channel Hilda Crafty. So let's get started with this video. This is the bottle. It is a glass bottle which looks ceramic. Love its shape. The scenery and label is printed so cannot be removed. So we'll use white gesso to cover this. You can use any brand from the market. I'm using homemade gesso. I have a video for this. We'll mention the link in the description box and in the i button to check that out. I'm going to use gesso just on the print, making sure I don't get a line of gesso showing at the sides and then let it dry very well. I felt it needed another coat of gesso. I didn't want the print to show later from behind, so went for it. And now the print didn't show. I wanted a brown tone for all the three bottles. So for the first bottle using chalk paint color choco cookie, I loved this color. Most of the items for the video is from Itsy Bitsy. You can use my coupon code Hilda5 to get additional 5% discount, link given below. When the paint was dry, I colored the bottom as well. I wanted a boho style for this bottle and I took a printout. You can use a white or black carbon paper to trace if you're not good at drawing. You can use a black sharpie or a white gel pen to draw on the outline. But I wanted to do something different. Using glitter here, had golden and copper, decided on copper. Using fevicol here on the outline. For the leaf, I felt the nozzle bottle didn't work well. So used a brush to apply glue and it was much neater this way. Covered the outline with glue except the lips. Did let the glue rest for some time and then poured glitter on the glue. Keep a newspaper below as you can collect the glitter and reuse it. Pour glitter generously to cover the glue very well and then turn the bottle and tap to throw the extra. I did go out and blew air gently with my mouth to remove the extra glitter and it did work. Now use a dry brush to remove the remaining glitter and let this copper glitter dry very well before we do the lips. I have two shades, we'll use the light one first and the dark for lips later. Applying glue with brush and this time using my fingers to pour glitter, turn and tap and clean and let dry. Now for the lips, applying glue again with fine tip brush and using the dark color red glitter with fingers to cover the area. Tap and do the same steps again and this is how it looks. You can use a spray gloss varnish on this but I want to leave it just as it is. To clean later, we'll use a dry brush. Okay, now for the second bottle. I had gessoed this as well. I'm going to use this beautiful decoupage napkin from Itsy Bitsy. The napkin has four parts. I just need one dragonfly. To cut, we'll use a wet brush to draw an outline near it and then use my fingers to tear on the wet area. The napkin has two plies beneath. So we'll remove the other two as we just need the printed ply. Now for this particular print, we need to separate the wings, the antenna part and the abdomen near the wings. This step will make it easy for the napkin to stick without any crease. After deciding where to place the dragonfly, we'll use ferricryl watch pot decoupage glue. Apply on the area required and place the napkin. And then use a dry brush and move from center to outside to get a good result. Then place a thin plastic sheet and smoothen with your fingers. This is how it looks. This is the best trick to get a crease free look. Now going to use the two plies we separated earlier and cut into small pieces something like this. Going to use these to cover the entire bottle and thought of overlapping the pieces to get a slightly cracked look. We're going to repeat the same steps we did for the dragonfly. 
carefully place the paper near the wing area so that it does not cover the print. We'll need more paper to cover the rest of the bottle. So going to tear from the napkin we have, leaving the dragonflies. Each piece will have three plies now that should be enough to cover the bottle. We we'll continue to overlap and cover the entire bottle. We'll cover the bottom area as well. Now for an important step to cover the entire bottle with a coat of decoupage glue to seal our work and let dry absolutely well. You can clearly see how the overlapping of paper has left a beautiful crack effect which is exactly what I was looking for. I still have this much of the decoupage napkin left for any other project. Now to varnish this you can go for gloss or matte. I settle for matte. Apply a coat and let dry. Okay, now let's move on to our third bottle. For this, I will be needing a little rough base. So making homemade chalk paint with POP, ratio will be 1 is to 2, that is 1 part of POP to 2 parts acrylic paint. Here I am making a little more, so 2 parts POP to 4 parts acrylic paint. Using white acrylic here, mix very well and then adding a little brown in it. I have a detailed video on how to make chalk paint at home, we'll mention the link below, do check that out. I had gessoed the print part earlier for this as well. Now apply a coat on the entire bottle and allow it to dry very well. Now using this terrarium sand from Itsy Bitsy, you can even use construction sand, just sieve and you can use. We'll cut just a little so it's easy to pour. We'll add equal part water to fevicol and mix well. The paint is dry. You can see the rough texture it is left. This will give a good grip to hold the sand. Apply a coat of glue and pour the sand on it. Keep a container and a paper so you can collect the sand and reuse it. Here you can see some patch without sand. That's okay, we'll take care of it in the second coat. Do the same procedure and cover the lower part of the bottle with sand. I have interesting and easy DIYs on bottle crafts, we'll mention the link below, you can check that out. After we are done with the lower part of the bottle, let it dry, then we move to the neck of the bottle and finally cover the top and let it dry very well. Now don't move the bottle, cover the glue with foil to avoid drying, I quite like the sandy texture. Bottle is dry now and for the second coat we will add little more water to the glue we already have. We need a thin layer of glue this time to get a good finish. Applying glue to the entire bottle this time and pouring the sand at one go. Leaving the top which we will take care after the bottle is dry. One tip I would like to add here. Don't touch the bottle till it's dry as touching will remove sand from that area and fixing that will give an uneven look. Now we will finish with the top part and let dry again. We will now again use a very thin layer of glue to fix the sand very well. Apply a coat on the entire bottle and let dry very well, leave it overnight preferably. Love the color of this sand and the texture. Now to give a coat of matte varnish. I had this in my stash. Gave a slightly copper touch and to add an antique look used my black stamp pad and fixed it here and let it dry and this is the final look. I like all the three bottles but this one is my favorite. Do let me know which one is your favorite from these. I hope you liked my attempt to make a beautiful bottle a little more pretty. Do subscribe and press the notification bell for more such videos. Do let me know if my next video should be on bottle craft or a planter DIY. This is all for today, I will come back soon with a brand new video, until then bye bye, take care and I love you all.